Hey developers, today we are gonna look at the top apps you should have in your JavaScript starter pack. Let's take a look. So before we begin, let me just tell you these apps are in no particular order. I use all of them every day. They are very useful and very helpful and that is why I'm including them in this list. If you have an application that you use every day, if you're a JavaScript developer or doing web development, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys use. I'm really interested, that'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Let's begin. So at number one, we'll start off with your IDE. So this is without saying, this goes without saying that you definitely need to have a very solid IDE to begin with. So I really like Vim and Visual Studio Code, but you, are, there's plenty of other options out there. Sublime is great, Atom is great. So I actually have a top five video of the top five IDEs if you're interested to kind of get an idea of which ones are out there. I'll go ahead and link it here. So uh, of course, Vim is not an IDE, it's a text editor. So you really do need to add in some plugins uh, just like you would do with Atom or, or any other kind of text editor. So you, really, you can really make these editors amazing IDEs. And I have a list of some great plugins I use. I'll, once again, I'll leave another link here in the description of what stuff I use. So first and foremost, definitely get a good IDE. So on the number two space, I use a program called Dash. Now, if you don't know what Dash is, it's a utility that makes it really simple to look up a lot of different libraries. So you can load up basically all of MDN, you can load up all your Ruby, JavaScript. Uh, I use it for Ember.js and Vue.js. And what I do is I have a hotkey on my keyboard. Um, I use a Mac, but you, there's similar programs for Windows too. You just hit your hotkey, you bring up Dash, you start typing in whatever term it is. Well, maybe I'm typing in filter or map or, or something like that. It'll bring up the article on the right hand side and then you can just go ahead and start using it. So it makes it really simple and useful. It's, you don't have to constantly go back to Google and Stack Overflow and, and Google things and try to look up which articles are the best. It's just really simple to bring up all the APIs that you use commonly and just look them up quickly. So I would highly recommend Dash as uh, one of the nice little apps to keep you productive quickly. So at number three, I have Chrome DevTools. I think all of us are, if you've done any type of web development, this is a lifesaver. Being able to bring up the console to go through the page, using it in combination with debugger and just going through and seeing like where the code is stopping, look at where your JavaScript isn't working, throw in some variables there. Chrome DevTools is actually really, really powerful. I should probably do a video on it sometime. You can really use it to, I, to be a very good uh, debugger of your code. And there's a lot of things you can do with it. You can look at network requests that are going back and forth. You can look at, uh, you can look at exactly what posts and gets and, and all the different requests are, are doing back and forth. You can analyze the speed of your page, that which makes it really nice. So I would highly recommend to get Chrome DevTools. I mean, Firefox has its own development tools, does, does IE, but I'm, I'm most comfortable with Chrome. And so when I develop, I always bring that up and that is very useful. So at number four, I have Postman and Curl. So Postman is a, it's a plugin you can get in for a bunch of different browsers, but definitely Chrome. And the way it works is you can put in your HTTP requests. Uh, you can put in your posts or gets, puts, patches, whatever you want. You can send it to the server and then look at the data coming back, which is really helpful. Uh, you can do this course on the command line for free with curl. Postman, they do have a free version. I think you can pay to get a, a more upgraded version. But um, you can do this with curl too if you just kind of man curl or look up some of the guides on it. But I think this is definitely a tool you'll need, especially when you're working with a back end. I always use it when, before I do some of my Ajax requests inside the code. I might just you know, ping the, the back end, the endpoint, and make sure it's working. I mean, maybe uh, if I have a, a demo environment up, if I'm if I already have a mock environment, then that's not as important. But I'm always trying to like see like what's in the back end, well, what do, what do I have there? And was this request going to work before I actually write the code, which is super helpful. And you can also curl and postman. I think are pretty pretty powerful. You can you can put in your own cookies. You can you can get pretty advanced with it. So it's well worth it. I think you can even do some scripting in Postman if you get the higher tier stuff. 
And last but not least is Page C Page Speed Insights, which is a Google tool. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of good, great Google tools, especially if you have uh, the Google Developer Tools. But Page and Speed Insights, I always like to put that in once uh, my site goes live. I can just kind of get an idea of how fast it's doing on mobile. It gives you some good suggestions on it grades it grades you on your on your speed of your page accessibility um, mobile versus desktop i mean some really helpful things that you should keep in mind when you're working on a, a web page and it gives you some suggestions on how to make it faster and and to score higher so i would highly recommend the page speeds insights tool you can also there's other chrome plugins that do something similar if you're doing a different uh, mobile apps you can definitely find some plugins that do do similar things but PageSpeed Insights is is one of the better ones out there so I would use that all the time so thank you that is my top picks for a JavaScript developer who is looking to get a startup back together I mean there's certainly other things we could have talked about I mean web development in general we could have talked about uh, you know, using Adobe Illustrator or Sketch or Photoshop, which is something that as web developers, we have to often use to make sure that the pictures we're using are working correctly. We could even go deeper in and talk about preprocessors or we can even talk about GitHub, things like that. But I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video right now. I just want to give you like five apps and this doesn't necessarily cover them all by any stretch of the imagination. There's a lot of other good stuff out there. There's ES linters. There's a lot of things you can do in your code itself. Um, there's small apps, Webpack stuff you can do. Um, you can set up your code and browser, browser, browserify it. But I just want to give you an idea of what I thought was some good starter kit apps to get going. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button. And by the way, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but Udemy is having a $10 sale. It's $10 sale if you're new. It's $12 if you are a returning customer and they're running that just for a few days. So it's back to school time. So a lot of people are trying to learn web development. So check it out. I have some affiliate links at the bottom. I get a couple bucks if you click on them. So thank you for watching. Take care.